Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Next Doc XL. And basically, what this can do is turn your phone into a laptop. Now, I'm going to be using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, but keep in mind, older Samsung S devices do support this. Basically, as long as you've got either HDMI out or USB Type-C video out, the Next Doc XL will work with your device, even something like the Steam Deck. So I've been using these Next Doc devices for quite some time. I've made videos on most of the uh, iterations they put out over the past few years. This one here definitely has a lot more built in than the others, like wireless casting. It's also got wireless charging, a magnet right in the top so we can actually attach our phone using something like MagSafe. Now I'm going to put quotations around MagSafe because that's an Apple thing, but there are a lot of devices out there that do support it. Inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the NextDock XL. We've got our charger for the unit itself, smaller USB Type-C cable, a metal ring just in case your phone doesn't support some type of magnet in the rear. A lot of the cases on the market do support it, and that's what I put on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, kind of making it MagSafe compatible. But one of my favorite things here is the keyboard and trackpad layout. As you can see, we've got a really nice backlit keyboard here. A full-size trackpad, given it is in an odd orientation, but I kind of like using it like this with my mobile devices. Up top here, we've got enough room to kind of place our phone. Wireless charger, we've also got that magnet built in, so your phone's not going to go anywhere where you've got this all hooked up. And overall, I think it's a sleek looking laptop. Now by itself, it doesn't do much. We've got HDMI in, wireless casting, and USB Type-C video in. Plus, the keyboard and mouse can be connected to your device using Bluetooth if you're going to go the wireless casting route. But if you've got this plugged in through USB Type-C, just keep in mind it will work over that connection. So it's not going to be wireless that way. Taking a look at the I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size USB. We've also got a micro SD card slot and our power button. Over on the left-hand side, we've got two USB Type-C ports. One of these is going to be strictly for charging the internal battery on the next dock. The other is going to be our video in, plus we've got mini HDMI. And up top here, we've got three LED indicators, kind of just giving us an idea of how much battery is left in the next dock XL. When it comes to the overall specs here, what we've got is a 15.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It is a touchscreen panel, 100% sRGB, 49 watt hour battery, wireless charging, HDMI, plus USB Type-C video in. We can cast to this wirelessly, micro SD card slot, full size USB port, four two watt speakers built into the next dock XL, backlit keyboard, and that multi-touch trackpad. Over on their website, they do have a list of compatible devices. The Samsung Galaxy S line from the S9 on up does support Samsung DeX, or you can just mirror the device if you wanted to. Motorola has their Ready4 software, and Huawei also has their own desktop operating system, but there are other devices on the market that do support desktop. Some of the Lenovo phones, because they're kind of Motorola, do support a desktop mode. Xiaomi did have some back in the day. I'm not sure if they're doing that with their new Hyper OS, but there are quite a few devices that will work with this. Getting right down to it, we're going to go ahead and power up the device. Remember, it's got its own built-in battery. That's what's going to power the keyboard, screen, and everything like that. Plus, we've got some extra there with that 49 watt hour, so we can charge up our device while we've either got it plugged in over USB Type-C or if you want to use wireless charging. Both wired and wireless charging can be disabled from the menu. And once we start this up, it's going to give us a rundown on how to connect everything. Remember, if you're going wireless with this, you will have to connect the keyboard and trackpad to your device. But we can swipe down with two fingers on the screen because it is a touch screen display. It'll bring up our OSD. From here, we can adjust the brightness, volume. You can totally customize the color gamut to your liking. But getting your device connected to the Next Dock XL is really simple. Again, I'm going to be using that Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And we're going to go with wireless mode first. From settings on my device, I just went to Samsung DeX. We're going to go ahead and start DeX, and it's going to scan for compatible devices. As long as the Next Dock XL is booted up, it's going to detect it. Make sure you choose the Next Dock. Wait a few seconds. And now we're running Samsung DeX on the big screen. We'll place this down right here. Again, wireless charging, so I'm now charging my phone. It's got that built-in magnet, and your phone isn't going to go anywhere. On my Galaxy S24 Ultra, I've got kind of a MagSafe case on it, but it does come with that little metal ring you can stick on the back of your device. 
With Samsung DeX, we do have a built-in trackpad, so we can actually use our phone screen as the trackpad, but since we've got a keyboard and trackpad built into the next dock XL, I don't need that. I can use my device separately so I can accept phone calls. They could even run a game or watch a movie on the phone's built-in screen while we're messing around with DeX up here on the larger screen. We do have a few built-in hotkeys on the keyboard so we can bring up our app menu. We can control the volume, brightness of the next dock XL. Overall, this is a pretty good experience, but one thing you need to keep in mind when you're connected wirelessly is it's only gonna be running at 30 FPS. We are at 1080p, but we're not gonna get true 60 FPS because it's using that wired connection. So personally, I don't suggest playing games like this. If you wanna play games, you will need to go wired and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But this is actually great for browsing the web, document editing, you can watch some videos. Theoretically, you could play games, but there will be some latency. That's just how it is when wirelessly casting decks to any device. But yeah, this is really great if you want to go wireless with it. And the phone actually doesn't need to be where it is right now. You could have it in your pocket casting to the next dock XL if you wanted to. It does have quad speakers built in. They're two watts each. It does get pretty loud, but I'll tell you the uh, Galaxy S24 Ultra speakers sound much better than the next dock itself. They're really here just in case you've got a device connected that you can't use speakers with. Going the wireless route would be great for a lot of people. If you just want to get some work done, it's not going to be a real issue. But the way I always like to connect this when I'm using any kind of device with Samsung DeX, even a large monitor, is over a wired connection via HDMI or USB Type-C. This does come with the smaller, flexible USB Type-C cable. And I've got my Galaxy S24 Ultra set up to automatically go into DeX. You can see it's now charging over USB Type-C. But we can disable both of the charging types. So if you didn't want to waste any of the battery, we can go right in here, disable wireless charging and wired charging. That way you can really get some good run time. But usually I just leave it on one or the other. But the main reason I like using a wired connection is because now we have no latency whatsoever between the phone and the next dock XL. Plus, we're now running at a true 1080p 60fps, so we're going to get that really smooth experience here. And it would be nice if we had a 120Hz display, but you know, I completely understand what they did here. One thing I've kind of been experimenting with recently with Samsung DeX is using the uh, built-in stylus here. So we can use the trackpad and kind of navigate Samsung DeX directly from the phone screen. But there are people out there that are going to want to multitask and it's not a problem with this setup because we can use that built-in phone screen for basically anything. We can answer calls, emails, we can play a game on the phone screen while we've got Samsung DeX up and running on the next dock XL. And this does have a micro SD card slot. I've tested it, but one thing I wanted to test here was just an external SSD. So I use this quite a bit for editing and we've got that USB port over here. Looks like it's powering up. I just need to go into my file manager. And I think it's going to show up here. It's just a 500 gigabyte Samsung SSD. Oh, file manager is up top here. And yeah, it actually is detected. So that USB port over there directly corresponds with USB Type-C we have plugged in to the Galaxy S24. And I mean, you could basically plug anything in there as long as it's compatible with Android. There are microphones and everything that'll work directly in Android. And right now, I've got a controller connected over Bluetooth to the S24, playing Minecraft on the big screen, watching a video on the phone screen. So multitasking works out really well with the next dock XL. There are quite a few people out there that their only real device to connect to the internet is their phone, and having a bigger screen really helps out, especially if you've got a device like this. Uh, video editing with Adobe Rush is just much easier with a larger display. I've just put some clips together here in Adobe Rush, and it does scrub the timeline pretty quickly because we've got a pretty powerful chip here in the phone we're using. It's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But again, the Samsung Galaxy S devices from the S9 on up will work with this and Samsung DeX. Even their Tab line, their higher end Tab S line, works great. But there are many other use case scenarios like the Steam Deck, and this is something that I've been doing quite a bit since I've got my hands on the NextDock XL. Just plug it right in, keyboard, trackpad, works with it. We don't have to connect it over Bluetooth because we've got a wired connection. Unfortunately, touchscreen support with uh, Steam Deck external displays is a bit hit or miss, but we've got speakers working and everything. And as you can see, it does work, but it's not quite right. It's kind of run into this with a lot of touchscreens connected to the Steam Deck. 
Uh, we also have desktop mode, and this would be a really great use case scenario for something like this. If you're on the go, you can definitely play all your games either on this thing or the Steam Deck's built-in screen. But if you've ever tried to use desktop mode on that built-in screen for anything important, you know how hard it can be. We've got this set up, so we've basically got dual monitors here. And yeah, trackpad, keyboard, sound, everything works here. We're also charging up the Steam Deck. And with this whole thing, you can always plug the next dock into the wall. It'll pass through charge, keep a charge on that Steam Deck and the built-in battery. I've also tested this out with the ROG Ally. Basically, any handheld that supports video out, HDMI or USB Type-C is going to work here. And again, 1080p, 60 hertz. We'll go with uh, Little Kitty, Big City. Got an external controller connected to the Steam Deck over Bluetooth, and we can play all of our games on the larger screen. Going from 7.4 inches on the Steam Deck to 15.6. Overall, been really enjoying the Next Dock XL. Been messing around with a bunch of different devices. Obviously, we tested out the S24 Ultra and the Steam Deck, but I used the ROG Ally on it. I also went with the Red Magic S8, so that does support some type of like desktop mode. It's actually called console mode, and both of those do work with the new Next Dock. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. Of course, it's not for everybody, but you know, if you're one of those people who want that bigger screen on the go and your main device is your phone, this could definitely help you out in certain situations. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.